One of the massive benefits of G-Code is that we can use cycles to shorten the amount of code we need to write to produce our parts. So in this series of lessons, we're gonna take a look at the G80 series of cycles, mostly drilling cycles, and we're gonna see how we use them and how they work. So we're gonna start off by writing a complete program for this sequence to drill these four holes in this component. So we start off by using our end number, our search function number. So since we're using tool three, I'm gonna call this N3. Now we can use any number we'd like here, but I like to keep it the same as the tool number, as we know what position the tool is in that we're gonna use, in this case, a 4.2 millimeter drill, and putting it into position tool three, offset three. So by using a search number N3, it's easy to work out where that tool is. So if we type N3 on the FANUC controls and the down arrow, it will search to the beginning of this block of code. So to follow that, we have T0303. This is tool free and offset free. And in brackets, as an operator's note, I say what tool we are using. So a 4.2 millimeter drill. Now we end each line with the end of block command, the semicolon. So MO6 is our tool change command. This brings tool free into the spindle. And now we tell the machine where our datum position is, as I explained in the setting the datums lesson. So the G10 line tells the machine we are gonna be setting our datum. L2 is our standard work offset. P1 puts this information into the G54 datum. So when we call up G54, all this information will be active. The X, Y, and Z coordinates here is the distance from the machine zero point to the corner of our part here where the datum is shown. Now here is our safety line. It's a stripped down version of the safety line. It could have more information here. So refer back to the safety line lesson on other information we can add to this line. But this line is G90, our absolute coordinate system. G54, which sets our datum that we called upon from the line above. G21 sets the machine to the metric measuring system. And G17 is our working plane. It's the plane that we are machining on. We could also add G40 here to cancel any compensation that may be active, and also G80 to cancel any cycles that may be active also. The S word defines our spindle speed. So I'm setting the spindle at 1,500 RPM, which might be a bit fast for a drill in high speed still, so I'm assuming we're machining soft material. MO3 turns our spindle on in a clockwise direction. MO4 would be anti-clockwise, while MO5 would stop the spindle. And now we're moving our drill over the position of the first hole that we wish to cut. So G00 is our rapid travel command. So we're gonna rapid our tool straight to this position and to a coordinate of X20, Y20. Now I'm not putting a Z move on this line because I'd like to add the Z move on a separate line. This is so we know that the spindle and the tool is right out of the way during our first rapid move. And then when we bring the tool down to a Z depth that's nearer the component, we can do it in single block and control the speed on the machine during the first run. It's just a safe thing that I like to do. We can put the Z on this line and a lot of programmers do do that. But this way, having it on a separate line, we can see in advance if any collisions is going to happen. So on this line, we're bringing the Z down to five millimeters above the surface of the component. And at this point, I like to turn the coolant on with MO8. Now we can turn the coolant on at any point before we start cutting, but doing it here allows us to see where the tool is going without coolant splashing around inside the machine. And now we get to the line that this lesson is all about. This is our G81 drilling cycle line. So G81 tells the machine that we wish to use a drilling cycle. Now, normally with machines, it would automatically switch to incremental mode at this time, but some machines do get confused here. So I've added a G91, which is our incremental G code. Now I've added this here. It's not gonna make any difference if the machine is not expecting it. So it's more of a safety feature because some machines will expect you to switch to incremental mode at this point other machines will automatically assume you are going to be doing this. 
so it doesn't hurt to add this line in here. Of course, if you wish to know how your machine acts at this point, check out the machine manual and it will tell you how it expects this line to look. But this line is generic for any machine, so it would be safe to do this on most machine types. Next up, we give it the depth of the final hole. So we're going to go down to minus 12 millimeters. So I'm going to assume that our material is 10 millimeters thick. So 12 millimeters would give us some clearance the other side of the material. Now you have to remember that if the material is clamped straight to the machine table, you will be drilling into the machine table by going deeper than the material. So using a back plate, or if it's in a vise, maybe on clamps, parallels, fixtures, however you decide to hold the material, you need to be aware that you're not gonna drill through the material into the machine when you set your Z depth of the drill. R1 is our retract value. This is the distance the drill will retract after it's drilled the hole. So then it's above the material. So once the hole has been machined, it will retract one millimeter above the material by using this R value. And finally, we give it a feed rate. Now remember, we're in millimeters per minute here because we're working in metric. So we're going to be drilling at 50 millimeters per minute. Now, if we didn't move the tool into the position of the first hole, we can add X and Y dimensions here to do that also. But because we moved to the position of the first hole using the rapid command G00, a few lines above, we can omit that here. Upon reading this line, the machine will drill the first hole to a depth of 12 millimeters deep and rapid back to one millimeter above the surface of the material waiting for its next command. And the next command is to move 50 millimeters to the right along the X axis. Now remember, we're in incremental mode here. So this position is taken from the last known position of the cutter and not from the datum position. When we give it this command, it will move to this position and automatically drill the hole to the Z depth that we predefined on the line above. So it will drill the hole to minus 12 millimeters. Now we can set a different Z depth here if we have different depths of holes. So we could add Z minus six millimeters, for example, and it would drill a six millimeter hole in this position. And we do the same thing for each hole. We just give an X and Y position on each hole and the machine will move to that position and automatically drill the hole using the data provided above. So this hole is 50 millimeters to the left of the last hole. So we just give a dimension of X 50. The drill will move to that position and drill the hole. To machine our final hole, we're given a distance of 40 millimeters in the Y plus direction. So the drill will move 40 millimeters in Y and then drill the hole to a depth of 12 millimeters. Once we have finished with our drilling cycle, we cancel it by using G80. Now G80 is our code to cancel any active cycle, not necessarily just this one. So if we were using a PEC drilling cycle, for example, we would still use G80 to tell the machine that cycle has finished. Although I have not demonstrated it with this program, it's good practice to add G80 to the safety line. This way, if we stop the machine during this cycle process and start again from the beginning, it would cancel that cycle before it starts moving. Since we switched the machine into incremental mode using G91, here I've canceled that mode and gone back to absolute by stating G90. As I was saying at the beginning of this lesson, some machines automatically switch to incremental mode when you activate a G81 drilling cycle and it automatically cancels incremental mode when G80 is activated later in the program. But we're adding this G91 and G90 as a safety precaution because some machines also like you to state that you wish to go into incremental mode during a drilling operation. It doesn't harm the machine or won't affect the program if you add this and your machine also switches automatically into incremental mode. So I've added that to these lessons just in case your machine does not switch to incremental mode automatically during a drilling cycle. So now we're back into the absolute coordinate system. We can use a rapid control command of G00 and rapid the cutter 50 millimeters above the component. 
I also take this opportunity to turn off the coolant with M09. This way, as the machine is moving the tool back to its home position, we can see clearly what's happening inside the machine without coolant getting in the way. G53 calls upon the machine datum, the datum position that we cannot change. Now this is normally at the tool change position, and here I'm assuming it is at the tool change position. So G53 tells the machine that we're using the machine datum, and to return to X0, Y0, Z0. So this puts the machine at its fastest possible rate because we're still under the G00 rapid control command that's active from the line above, back to the tool change position or the machine zero position. While the tool is in transit back to this position, I've issued an MO5 command to stop the spindle. Some machines take a while for the spindle to slow down, so this way the spindle is already deaccelerating on the way back to its home position, so the machine doesn't have to wait for the spindle to stop before it carries on with the next line. Here I've issued an M01 command. This is the optional stop command, so when the machine reads this, it will check to see if the button has been pushed on the controls to see if we wish to stop the machine at this point. If we didn't push the optional stop button, the machine will carry on reading through the program. So that's the G81 drilling cycle, the most basic drilling cycle we have available to us. In the following lessons, we'll be looking at different drilling cycles and how they work, and we're gonna be using the same program as an example. So I won't go through line by line how it works, as we've already discussed that. We'll just be looking at how this particular cycle works within this program that we've just written.